Legalism is never a good thing because often legalism causes people to do things without the heart behind it. You know, it's just like a list of rules to gain favor as opposed to doing something out of a relationship with Christ. guys welcome to today's video today we're gonna unpack purity culture was it a negative or positive thing for the Christian community did it have negative drawbacks or was it an overall positive trend that occurred in the Christian world before we get into this video my name is Molly if you are new here I make videos that help encourage women to reject the lies of the culture and find fulfillment in Jesus and if you're new I'd love to have you subscribe and join this little community so that you can feel less alone in your desire to walk with Christ so let's start talking about purity culture purity culture happened began like in the 1990s and i think probably lasted through the early 2000s i graduated in 2007 um so i feel like i was near the tail end of that movement i don't know kind of right in between um but you know purity culture came with the trend to, for people to wear purity rings and the book i kissed dating goodbye came out by joshua harris that kind of turned the world upside down the christian community upside down and promoting courting instead of dating and um, it was definitely a big movement. There was a lot of people in like the Christian music industry, like I talked about in my last video, Rebecca St. James was a huge example to me of saving sex till marriage. It was just something that was very talked about for young people. There was a lot of books and things like that that came out. So the positive aspects of purity culture, I think, were the fact that it created this movement and this community for young people to seek um, obedience to Christ in the area of sexual purity. You know, it created that true love waits kind of trend and, and created kind of a name and a movement for a concept and something that God calls us to do. So I think that was a really positive thing. You know, there was a lot of a lot of voices out there that were encouraging young people to do that. I think the second positive aspect of purity culture was the fact that it acknowledged the gravity of sexual sin. It acknowledged that there's a lot of consequences to not being obedient to what God calls us to do, which is save sex till marriage. Now, no sin is worse than the other in a sense, but some sins have worse consequences than others and sexual sin has a lot of negative consequences unplanned pres uh, unplanned pregnancies the potential for stds or those kind of complications and also just the shame and guilt of memories of previous sexual encounters and as well as the fact that when you're not expressing and having sex within a covenant relationship of marriage your potential for hurt goes way, way up because you're giving yourself to someone, you're sharing something so personal with that other person. So I think purity culture was really good at promoting the gravity of that. And I think we could come back to that now a little bit more in Christian culture. We've kind of strayed away from that. But I also think there was some things that potentially could have missed caused some people to misunderstand what it means to follow Christ. Um, that purity culture maybe potentially cause. I wouldn't say for sure. I'm, I'm not the smartest person on this topic, but I just had this thought that some people may have seen saving sex for marriage as this legalistic thing because it was so expressed with this movement. Legalism is never a good thing because often legalism causes people to do things without the heart behind it you know it's just like a list of rules um, to gain favor as opposed to doing something out of a relationship with christ i also think because it was this very popular movement that possibly i think some young christians and i'll say even the word immature christians or even non-christians may have adopted this commitment without realizing the importance of honoring God with all of who you are, which I kind of talked about in my last video. And I think if you don't understand that 
like everything kind of has the domino effect. Like if you're not honoring God with, with growing closer to him and spending time with him, but you're like, but I'm going to save sex till marriage, then you're missing the importance of a relationship with God. And so people may, may have um, inadvertently misunderstood that this is a part of following Christ, but it's not the end all be all. And I also think that if you had that mindset with saving sex till marriage, then it could have greatly caused you to just throw out saving sex till marriage when it no longer served you well. Well, when you got older and you're like, well, I'm 20 now, I'm not doing that anymore because it doesn't seem cool anymore or doesn't seem possible anymore. And I kind of see that with potentially what could have happened with the Jonas brothers. You know, they were in the news for wearing purity rings and it was like this big thing. And then suddenly when they got a little bit older, it was like, actually, we're not doing that anymore. That was a good thing then, but it's we're not doing that anymore kind of thing. I think another potential misunderstanding that some people may have gotten from purity movement from the purity culture, which I don't think both of these things, I don't think are necessarily the fault of the people that started this trend. I don't know, maybe they could have shared more, but I think some people may have inadvertently thought that saving sex for marriage was a solution for a perfect marriage like this equation of like if i save sex till marriage then my marriage will be perfect sex will be amazing and i'll be so fulfilled in that and and so in a sense some people may have idolized the fact of like um, sex and saving sex till marriage being this perfect solution for a happy life and that really is rooted in selfishness because we never want to make a decision to do something for christ because we hope to get something in return or because we believe that if I do this, I will be happy. If I do this, I will, life will be perfect for me. We follow Christ because we want to serve him, because we want to be obedient with him. Often we do receive blessing and joy and happiness from making the right decision. And I think that is very, very often part of following Christ. But often as well that happiness and that joy may not look exactly like what we hope and there can also be sorrow and hardships in making the right decision for christ for my example of my life what i shared in my last video my former husband and i we saved our first kiss till we got engaged we saved sex till marriage did that make it so that i had this perfect blissful marriage no i ended up getting divorced and so i could say well god i did all this for you but look what you did to me you didn't save my marriage but that would be a very selfish selfish approach to looking at that um you know sin and and the realities of living in a fallen world make it so that sometimes things don't go the way we hope for. Some people may have misunderstood that. But overall, I want to come back to purity culture and saying that I think it was a positive trend in the fact that it was helping create this movement to promote the importance of saving sex till marriage. Now, could it have had more of a holistic approach of honoring God with all of who you are and explaining more that your sexuality, like I said in my previous video, is part of who you are and honoring God with your body? Could it have done maybe a more holistic approach of explaining that? Maybe. I can't be the judge of this whole movement, but I want to end on talking about the fact that often the negative voices are those that are heard the loudest. And I think with like, for example, Joshua Harris coming out and saying, I'm no longer a Christian. And like everything I wrote in my book, I kissed dating goodbye. Like, I don't believe anymore. Basically, you know, he, he said all that. It kind of brought some people out of the woodwork of um, saying negative things from purity culture. But I just think that the negative voices are the ones that scream the loudest and we hear that so much more than those that had the positive experience those that still hold strongly to their faith that still strongly believe that they made the right choice like i don't think if you were to talk to anyone that saved sex till marriage that was a virgin on their wedding day i don't think if you talk to anyone that they would say i wish i had i had slept with a lot more people like i i just really don't think that's possible maybe some people would say that but are those people um, people who are actively pursuing and following Christ right now? I don't know. And often people that have negative 
thoughts about purity culture are those that like rejected Christianity as a whole. So, I mean, really they're rejecting Jesus. They're not rejecting this, this movement. They rejected Jesus, you know? So that's what I think we have to keep in mind when we hear negative thoughts about things is like, who are they, who are these voices coming from? Because often the faithful people are a little bit more quieter. Not always. There are voices that should be loudly speaking of God's truth, but often like the everyday person that's just walking with Christ, following Christ, they don't have, they're not screaming out on, you know, social media, their negative thoughts on things. They're just going about their day-to-day -day life following Jesus. So that, those are my final thoughts on this topic. I want to hear what you think. If you disagree with me, if you have some other thoughts on what I, that I didn't share on this topic, I'd love to hear from you. And I'm ending this video on purity culture. I will see you guys next week, next Monday. All right. Bye, guys.